Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, arrays and table diagrams uh, and their advantages uh, over tree diagrams in some situations and when to use them. Okay, so for this particular video, I'm going to go through three different questions um, that sort of takes you through one, how to set out uh, an array, all right, or a table. Uh, in comparison to a tree diagram and how you can get essentially the same information. One on how to actually use uh, an array or a tree diagram and another one, uh, the final example I'm going to talk about why it's better to use a table or an array, okay, uh, versus a tree diagram in that particular situation. Okay, so in this first one, right, it just says show the outcomes of tossing a fair coin twice, okay. So um, I'm going to use this uh, first on an information with a tree diagram and then we're going to do, do it using a table, okay. Alright, so when I talk about tossing a fair coin twice, we have two different outcomes. So for the tree diagram, uh, we have two separate outcomes, okay, my apologies, I might just get a better pen. We have two separate outcomes. We have the first outcome of achieving a heads, and we have the second outcome of achieving a tails. Okay, and then our last outcomes that we have for every time that we do this, we can get either another head or a tail, and vice versa, another head or another tail. Okay, just like what we've done before. And what we can do, notice that we're just showing the outcomes here, right? It's a little bit like listing the sample space. Um, I like to write my outcomes down here as I go along. All right, and so uh, in this particular outcome, we have a head and a head, so the outcome is head, head, and in this one, we have a head and then a tail, so head, tail, and then we have a tail, head, and then we have a tail, tail. Now, I'm not looking at the probability of each of these, I'm just looking at the usefulness in terms of listing out uh, the sample space here. So this here would be my sample space going down this particular case, all right? Now, using a table, we actually have something that achieves uh, almost the exact same result. Okay, right, so I want you to understand that this is going to be my first toss of the coin, okay, and this is also going to be my first toss of the coin. Now, what I want you to understand is we're going to work down, for every heads that I toss, right, I could toss either another head or another tail, okay, so I just need you to understand that this is going to be what occurs on the second toss, okay. So in this first case, we have a head and then a head on the second toss, right, so head first and then head second. On this next one, we have a head first. All right, and then we have a tail second. All right, vice versa. If we chuck a tails first, we have a tails first, and then a head, and then we have a tails and a tail. So we have tails, tails. And what you'll notice that in the table, it's actually set up almost exactly like, uh, exactly like what we've done here. All right, and so heads, heads, tails, head, head, tails, 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 which is exactly the sample space that we have up here from our original example. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about how we actually use this in terms of calculating probability um, before we sort of move on to when you when you go about using this, okay? So let's have a look at example two. So for example two, what we're talking about here, you'll notice that it says two red cards, okay? And they're distinct red cards. They're not the same, all right? They are distinct. It has red one and red two. So they're not the same red cards. It might be the case that one's a, one's a diamond and one's a spade, if we're thinking in terms of um, in terms of this. Sorry, diamond and a heart, not a spade. Spades are black cards. Um, when we're talking about this particular thing, right? And this uh, other one down here, we also have one black card, which is also distinct. They're placed in a box so we can't see what's happening. And then two cards are selected at random. Okay, so that means that we're talking about probability here with replacement. So once they're pulled out, they're put back in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a table to list the outcomes of the experiment. All right, so exactly like what we did before with the dice. Okay, I'm going to draw my table out here. And I'm going to talk about what I do on my first draw. On my first draw, I have three separate outcomes that I can achieve. I can achieve a red one, I can achieve a red two, and I can also achieve a black one. So of the two red cards, we can also achieve a black one card. Then for each one of these that I draw, when I put it back in, I can now draw a red one card, a red two card, and a black two card, a uh, black one card, my apologies. Okay, so, Let's just go through and we're just going to label out all of the outcomes that we can have here. We can have a red one, red one. We can have a red one, red two. We can have a red one, black one. All right. Then here, red two is the first draw. Then red one is second. Red two is first. Then red two. And then we have red two, black two. Okay. We're just going through and we're just labeling everything out. And then finally on our last one here, we have a black one, a black one card first. All right, uh, followed by a red one card, then a black one, red two, 
and then a black one, black one card draw. All right, now what I want you to look at in terms of how we actually use this is how many actual outcomes do we have? They're all equally chanced, okay? Right, they all have equal chance of happening because we've done with replacement. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different outcomes. And we're gonna use this fact, right, given the fact that they all have equally likely outcomes, all right, to answer this second question. Okay, so it asks you, what's the probability of selecting a red one, red one, or a red two, red two? So what I do is I go, sweet, I have red one, red one, and I have red two, red two. I have a possibility of nine outcomes that I can select out of. So what I write is probability of red one, red one, or red two, red two, is equal to two out of nine, okay? That's the advantage of doing things inside of a table. It's very, very easy to identify how many things you have available to you in your sample space, provided that those things have equally likely outcomes, okay? This is not a two-way table, this is just a normal table. Okay, so what we're going to do now, all right, is we're going to have a look at the advantage of using a table over a tree diagram in a specific, uh, in a specific example. So what this talks about is that two fair dice are rolled and the result is added. So I roll a dice, right, and I might get a one and a five. I add them together and I get a six. All right, or I might get a six and a four. I add them together and I get a ten. That's what it talks about with two fair dice. All right, we're assuming that the dice are six-sided. I'm not going to specify that, but we're assuming that they are. And what it's asking you is, what is the probability that they add to seven? Okay, we're going to use a table in this particular question to help us with our answer, rather than a tree diagram. So how do we structure out our table? Okay, right, well, we structure it out the exact same way as what we have before. Okay, on the first dice, all right, and they're not specific, it's just two fair dice, we can roll a one, we can roll a two, we can roll a three, all right, trying to be as neat as possible, a four, a five, or a six, okay? Right, and then vice versa, right? For every one that we roll, we could also roll a one, a two, three, four, a five, or a six. So I might just quickly extend these down, okay? You can use a ruler of this if you're trying to be neat, but I'm just trying to highlight a concept here for you. And let's just make this a little bit easier for us to see everything that's going on. Okay? Now what we do when we construct out our table, right, is talking about the fact that the result is added. So I like to add a little bit of a plus up here, just to keep me in mind of what's going on. So I'm gonna do one plus one is equal to two. And then I work down my columns, right? So I'm now gonna do one plus two, that gives me three, right? And I might over here do, um, I might end up doing two plus two, well that's gonna give me four, okay? And vice versa all the way along. So I'm gonna pause the video here, okay? And I'm gonna fill this in, so when we come back, you'll see it filled in. You're, you're welcome to have a go at doing this before me, okay? Okay, so once we've done that, okay, and we've come back to it, this is what we have. This is our grid of numbers from each of our outcomes, okay? Right, you might, might notice that there's a little bit of a pattern, okay? So you'll notice that our numbers go in diagonals along here, okay? Um, so what we're gonna use now is we're gonna find the probability that they add to seven. So we wanna find the probability that a seven occurs. Well, that's equal to, right, well, all we do is we just go along here and we count up how many sevens we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, six sevens. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we wanna calculate how many outcomes we actually have. All right, well in this grid we have six outcomes here, and we have another six come outcomes uh, going along uh, this right, the, the horizontal. So this is six times six outcomes, so we have 36 total outcomes. And that makes sense, because for every six, Side of dice that we roll, if we roll another one, we have another six outcomes. Okay, so six out of 36. Simplifying down, we end up with just a simple one in six is our probability. Now you might ask, why don't we do this problem, right, with a tree diagram? And I'm gonna to explain to you why, uh, in problems where you have a lot of outcomes on each, each of the particular things, okay, we do use a tree diagram. Uh, we use a uh, array rather than a tree diagram. And it's because your tree diagram gets very, very complicated. So watch what happens as I start to structure this out. Okay, on our first roll, we can achieve either a one, or a two, or a three, or a four, or a five, 
or a six. Already our tree diagram is looking much more complicated. I'm not going to finish this off. Uh, the reason being is because when I show you how to do this using a tree diagram, um, it would be very, very, very cluttered. Okay, so I think I'll make my point just by showing you what we do on the first one. If we roll a one, just remember, we can still roll one, two, three, four, five, or six outcomes. Okay, now that's going to be very difficult for me to fit on the page and be neat. That's why I'm not being neat right now with this because I'm not planning to finish it off. That would take a lot of time and it personally does not highlight the same amount of information that you need in a easy to understand manner as what a table or an array does. Okay, all right. So I hope that's helped you out, okay, and that you understand the difference between the two and when to use them. Okay, thank you very much.